Hey there, welcome to this Real Python course on implementing linear regression in Python. What is regression? Regression analysis is a statistical method for estimating the relationship between a dependent variable and one or more independent variables. Regression techniques are used in all branches of the sciences and finance. The two main uses of regression are prediction and inference. In prediction, the goal is to forecast the outcome of some event, state, or object from some previous knowledge. Whereas in inference, your goal is to determine whether an event, a state, or an object affects the production of another event, state, or object. When used for prediction, regression analysis has substantial overlap with the field of machine learning. In regression, the goal is to build a mathematical model describing the effect of a set of input variables on another variable y. The input variables are sometimes called predictors, independent variables, or features. The variable y is called the response, the output, or the dependent variable. As an example, y might be the sale price of a home, and the independent variables might be the square footage of the home, the proximity of the home to schools, the proximity of the home to hospitals, or maybe the sell price of other homes in the same neighborhood. In regression, you assume some mathematical model between y and x. Here f is the model, it's a function of x, and the response depends on the model plus some random error term. So the main goal of regression is to build a good model for f. To build the model, you need data. In other words, you need observations or actual measurements. So in the example of the sell price of a home, you've got the data for the sell price of one home, another home, third home, and so on. The gist of a regression technique, so what differentiates it among others, is how you take the n observations to build the model f. There are many regression techniques, linear, polynomial regression, nonlinear regression, decision trees, support vector machines, neural networks, and many others. In this course, you're going to learn how to use the Python module scikit-learn to implement linear regression and the related polynomial regression. Why linear regression? Well, linear regression is the most widely used regression method. In linear regression, the model F is assumed to take the following form. The input variables appear linearly in the model, and you have a constant term, which is sometimes called the bias or the intercept. Scikit-learn is used in machine learning and built on top of the popular module NumPy. Let's talk a little bit about the environment that I'll be using for the course. You're going to need Scikit-learn. You can use pip to install it, or if you want other modules for data science, I recommend Anaconda Python. I'm going to be using Jupyter in this course, so if you're not familiar with Jupyter, you can go ahead and check out this real Python course on how to use Jupyter. But if you're more comfortable with using your own editor, it's perfectly fine. You'll have no problems following along. And one more note, the code in this course has been tested in Python 3.9, but even if you have slightly older versions of Python, you should be all right. Here's a table of contents of the course. We're going to begin by taking a look at simple linear regression. This is linear regression where we only have one input variable. Then we'll move on to multiple linear regression and then tackle polynomial regression, both for the simple case and for the multiple input case. And then we'll wrap things up in a summary. All right, I hope you're looking forward to the course. Let's get going then. In this first lesson, we'll introduce the basics of regression by taking a look at the simplest case called simple linear regression, where we only have one scalar input. We're going to use simple linear regression to introduce a lot of the ideas that we're going to need when we talk about multiple linear regression and polynomial regression. In simple linear regression, there is only one independent variable, which we're going to denote simply by x instead of putting a subscript x sub 1. So the model f depends only on that input variable x, 
and the unknowns are the coefficients b0 and b1, and we assume a linear model. Now, as in the general case, we have n observations. So we've got an observation for the input and its associated observation for the output. And we've got n of these. And so the problem is going to be to find the coefficients b sub 0 and b sub 1 so that the estimated response, so this is the response that we get by taking in one of the observed inputs and applying it to our model, that estimated response is as close as possible to the actual observed response y sub i, and we want to do this for all observations i from 1 through n. Now, the differences between the actual responses y sub i and the estimated responses with our found model is going to be called the residuals. And so we're going to have n residuals. One way to collectively minimize all of the residuals is to minimize this function that's usually called RSS, which is called residual sum of squares. And from its name, what we're doing is we are computing the residuals for each observation i, we're squaring them, and we are summing those up from i equals 1 through n. Now, because the observations are fixed, the residual sum of squares function, this only depends on the coefficients b0 and b1. So when you think about this expression, these observations for the response and for the corresponding input, those are actual numerical values that are known. And this RSS function really only depends on b0 and b1. So finding b0 and b1 that minimizes this RSS function is a standard optimization problem. Using some techniques from calculus, you can actually derive explicit formulas for the coefficient b sub 0 and b sub 1. Now in these formulas, the overline y and the overline x notation, or bar y, bar x notation, those denote the averages of x and y. And so these are nice closed formulas for those coefficients. Now in the background, the module scikit-learn, which we'll see in a minute, will be computing these coefficients for you. So of course you're not going to have to compute these manually using, say, these formulas or some other method. All right, that's the math behind simple linear regression. Let's take a look at what's going on visually with some test data. This figure is a visual representation of what's happening in simple linear regression. In this hypothetical test data, we've got six observations, and these are represented by these six green dots. The x values, or the inputs for these observations, are at 5, 15, 25, 35, 45, and 55. And the black line represents the computed linear regression line for this test data. So in this particular case, for these six observations, so these are x and y pairs, computing the coefficient b sub 0 and b sub 1, we get these two values. And this is the data that we'll use when we go on to the next lesson when we implement this in Python. Now, the line that's computed, the linear regression line, the coefficient b sub 0, that is visually or graphically the point on the y-axis where the line intersects. And the coefficient b1, that is the slope of the line. When we evaluate the, the model, the linear regression model, so this function, when we evaluate it at the input variables from the observed data, we get these red squares. And so these right there are the predicted responses or the estimated responses for the corresponding input values. The difference between the actual response, so y sub i, and the estimated or predicted response f at x sub i is graphically represented by this vertical line. So in this particular observation, the actual response, so the green dot, is greater than the estimated response, while in this observation, the actual response is less than the predicted response.
So to summarize, the main idea with simple linear regression is to find the best line that fits the data where the word best is measured by the function that minimizes the residual sum of squares. All right, let's implement simple linear regression on this same test data in Python using sklearn. All right, if you already haven't, fire up an instance of a Jupyter Notebook, an editor, or any other terminal that you're comfortable with to write your Python code. First thing, let's import the two modules that we're going to need. We're going to need NumPy. And we're going to need a class from the sklearn module that's going to implement linear regression. Let's create some dummy data to try out the linear regression class. The input array. We're going to be using an array containing six data points. And the linear regression object is going to be expecting for the input array a two-dimensional array. As we have it now, this is a one-dimensional array containing six data points. So let's make this input array a two-dimensional array containing six rows and one column. To do that, we use the reshape function. We pass it in a tuple, number of rows, and the number of columns. There's a shortcut that we can use in reshape when we want reshape to infer the number or the dimension size for one of the dimensions, we can pass in a minus one value. And so what reshape is going to do is that because this array contains six data points and we're asking that reshape return us a two dimensional array containing one column, because there are six data points, the number of rows is going to be computed automatically as six. Now let's create the output array. So let's verify that X has a shape of six by one. And the shape of Y. So here y is a one-dimensional NumPy array containing six data points. Now let's build our regression model. And then to actually compute the model, in other words, in this case, compute the coefficients, we need to use the fit method on the model object that we created using the linear regression class. Fit takes two required positional arguments, the first one x being the input variable and y being the response. Now that we've called the fit method on the model object, the model object contains attributes that contain all of the coefficients. The b0 coefficient is the intercept attribute. And the other coefficients in the model that are the ones that are in front of the input variables, in this case there's only one input variable, is in the coefficient attribute, or COEF underscore. This attribute is a NumPy array in this case which has only one data point or one value, which is the B1 value. In regression, there's a value that can be used to determine how good a linear model fits the data, and this is the R-squared value. To get the R-squared value, you use the score method on the model, and you input whatever X and Y values you want. In this case, let's use the actual observations to see what the R-squared value is on the data that we have. An R-squared value that is close to 1, or exactly equal to 1, means that a linear model is a good fit for the data. We talked about how regression can be used for two main purposes, for prediction and for inference. Let's use our model to predict 
what the responses are for the observed inputs for x. Another way to get these values is to manually evaluate the inputs x on our model. So if you recall, the model is B0, plus B1, evaluated at the inputs x. Oh, forgot my T there. All right, so really a way to think about this abstractly is that this is f of x evaluated at each of the individual x values. And in this case, because x is a NumPy array containing six data points, we're going to get six responses. The real power of prediction using a regression model is to evaluate the model at inputs x to determine the corresponding response. So let's create a new input array. And we'll use the a range function in NumPy, which is similar to the range function, which creates an array, in this case a NumPy array, from 0 to 5. And we're going to need this to be a two-dimensional array. And let's run that actually now so that we print the output. And now let's use the model to predict what the responses are for those new inputs. And there you go. You just created your first linear regression model and used the model to predict responses for desired inputs. Now that you know how to implement simple linear regression using scikit-learn, let's now talk about multiple linear regression, and then we'll come back to Jupyter to implement that using scikit-learn.